Okay, let's go ahead and find the volume of this figure. And just by looking at it here, it appears to be a cylinder, and that is exactly what it is. So we're going to uh, be finding the volume of a cylinder. I'm going to show you exactly how to uh, do this. Not too difficult, but uh, I do want to highlight or um, kind of review some main fundamental concepts with respect to volume, surface area, and area. But before we get into all of that, let me go ahead and quickly introduce myself. My name is John. I'm the founder of Tabla Class Math. I'm also a middle and high school math teacher, and over many years I've constructed what I like to believe is one of the most comprehensive, best online math help programs there is. Of course, I'll let you be the judge of it if you're uh, of that, if you're interested. I'm going to leave a link to that, uh, my program, in the description of this video. But my program is really uh, the years years and years of building super comprehensive detailed lessons and solving thousands and thousands of problems. So I really know, understand by just teaching for decades what te uh, students really need to learn math. I do all of that hard work for the benefit of my students. So I've been very successful with it. So whether you're taking um, a course and need help with the course or you need to take a full math course, I have uh, several math courses that may interest you. So you can find that in the link in uh, the description. All right, so let me quickly talk about math notes. If you're not taking good math uh, notes right now, you really are putting yourself at peril in terms of uh, being successful at math. It's just a solid rule that I've seen as a teacher is um, those students with the best math notes have the best math grades and the reverse is true. So if your notes are disorganized, sloppy, or maybe you're not even taking notes, uh, you got to correct that, okay? But in the meantime, you need something to study from. So I actually offer math notes. I'm going to leave a link to those in the description of this video as well. Those would include pre-algebra, algebra 1, geometry, and algebra 2, and trigonometry. Okay, so let's get into uh, this problem. And as I promised you, uh, we have, uh, I want to do a quick review about area and surface area. I'm not going to go into too much detail here and volume but just some highlights, some basic concepts, okay? So when you're studying uh, area, surface area, and volume, and you're likely studying volume and uh, these related uh, topics, if you're looking at this video or watching this video, so just remember area is going to be um, in units uh, squared, all right? So if we're working with inches or feet, you know, it would be feet squared, all right? Surface area, same thing, units squared, so feet squared, okay? And then volume is going to be units cubed, okay? So like feet uh, cubed. So units of measure are really important in terms of area and surface area and volume. Now, uh, another thing is, depending on your level of uh, math, uh, you're probably a more, more basic level, basic geometry level. We need, we're gonna be given basic figures, okay? So in other words, like rectangles, or, you know, little like rectangular boxes, uh, maybe uh, circles, triangles, things like that here. In this case, cylinders. So also we can have like pyramids as well and things like that. But these are like uh, considered uh, basic figures, basic shapes. Okay, and there's like a handful of them, right? Pyramids, cylinders, spheres, boxes, uh, parallelograms, triangles, trapezoids, etc. So you need to know the formulas, okay, for these guys and how to apply them. So um, uh, oftentimes students can confuse formulas, let's say for surface area, for volume and vice versa. So you're gonna end up with a lot of different formulas for area, surface area and volume. So again, you got to have very, very good notes and organized notes and you have to be aware of units of measure, etc. Okay, so just because we're going to learn how to find the volume of a cylinder, um, finding the surface area of a cylinder is a completely different deal, okay? So do not confuse the concepts and the formulas, all right? Just a little highlight there. One other little uh, interesting uh, thing here is that we do need formulas for all these different shapes. Now, I've uh, done a quite a bit of, quite a bit of uh, videos on the um, you know, calculus, basic concepts of calculus. So here, these are basic figures, which you need to really know those formulas. But if I was trying to find the... Uh, volume of a uh, something that looks like this, okay? Uh, I'm just kind of drawing some crazy little shape like that. I would need calculus to do this, okay? Uh, you can't, it's not gonna be a formula for some crazy figure that looks like that. So 
Um, again, you know, that's why you need to really know the formulas for these basic figures at this level of mathematics. When you, when you get into calculus, whole different story. But we'll just leave that for uh, when you're ready for calculus, and hopefully you take that subject uh, sometime in your future. Awesome math. Don't be afraid of it. I know people are like, oh, it's very difficult. Yes, it's challenging, but you should take it if you're interested in the subject. All right, so let's get to our problem. And again, like I said, you need to have a, uh, a formula. First of all, you need to recognize what shape you're talking about here. So this is a cylinder, right, like a soup can or anything else like that. So here is the uh, formula, okay, for the volume of a cylinder. So its volume is equal to uh, the area of the base times the height. So another way to kind of express that is we've got to find the area of this like the top or the bottom of the cylinder, and then we're gonna multiply it by the height, okay? So you can see here that the um, area of the base is going to be the area of a circle, right? So this is a circle. So that base area is nothing more than pi r squared. Now, if you didn't know that that was the formula for an area of a circle, now you know, okay? So really, this uh, formula, I could express this as uh, pi r squared times the height. Okay, so that's going to be uh, the volume of a cylinder. That's the um, formula that we need to use. Now, uh, looking at our uh, problem here, we notice that the units of measure, these, when you have a little, uh, one little um, deal like that, little apostrophe, that's feet, right? So this is eight feet, this is eight inches. Okay, so just in case you don't confuse the two, when we're talking about units of measure, but before we go to work on this, we have to make sure that our height and what are the um, pieces of information that we have are in the same units of measure. So we have feet here and feet here. If I have feet and inches, then I need to convert to one unit, uh, uh, one unit of measure, right? So I can either go all feet or all inches, but here I'm dealing with feet and feet, okay? So just make sure this is all the kind of pre-work. So this is um, eight feet. Uh, two inches for my what? This is my radius. Okay, so hopefully um, you're pretty familiar with circles. If you're not, I got plenty of videos on the area of a circle. So let's go ahead and actually calculate this now. And here's what it's going to look like. Okay, so got to find the area of the base. Okay, so that's something more than pi r squared, which is um, again pi r squared. R is the radius, which emanates from the center of the circle, so it's 2 feet. So it's going to be pi times 2 squared, okay? This right here represents the area of our base, then we're going to multiply it by the height, 8. So we'll go ahead and do the math. So 2 squared is 4, 4 times pi. We could just write it like that, times the height, 8. So when I multiply 8 by 4, I get 32 pi. Again, we're dealing with feet. And remember, this is volume, so it's going to be the unit of measure is feet cubed, right? So right here, just so you know, this 2 squared right there, okay, is 2 feet, and we're squaring it, okay, so that we get our 4 foot squared unit of measure, and then we're multiplying by 8 feet over here, 8 feet, and of course, there's a pi here as well, but this is where we get feet times feet squared, we end up with feet cubed, right? So if you're just curious on how we get to that unit of measure, that's how we get to it. Now, right here, four times eight is 32, and then we have our pi. This is considered an exact answer, exact. So notice my little equation symbol here is equal. This is precisely equal to this. So my volume is 32 pi feet squared. This is a good way to just represent your answer. So I would leave this like like so, um, unless your teacher wants it uh, in like a decimal version. Now, when you know, notice here that I have the volume and I have these little squiggling lines. This is approximately, okay? So I'm doing an approximation because I'm going to use an approximate value for pi. So pi, we all know, is approximately 3.14, that decimal. But that goes on infinitely, okay, it's non-terminating, non-repeating, it's an irrational number, so I can use a pretty uh, detailed or long uh, estimate of pi, but when I, whatever I use for pi, let's say it's 3.14, and I multiply it by 32, I'm going to get a decimal, which gives me a good feel for the volume, okay, but again, this is an approximation, right, so this is an approximation here, 
And this is an exact answer. So just be careful these little details, okay? Well, especially with what uh, the question might be asking you. If the question might be saying, give us, give me the exact volume of the cylinder, then you want to express your answer in this form, okay? Or you might be asked to uh, select a multiple choice question for um, and then identify the correct decimal value. Okay, so that is it. Um, again, you know, you want to put this in context of the bigger picture of area, surface area, and volume, okay? And uh, um, again, this is another example of how note-taking is critical. Just tons of things you need to be remembering. Certainly don't try to remember these formulas and all these procedures, you know, in your brain. Use uh, paper and pencil. Take good notes, okay? But again, if you don't have good notes right now, then you can uh, pick up a pair of mine, super detailed and comprehensive. But um, hopefully you enjoyed this video. If, and if it helped you out in some way, please consider smashing that like button. And if you're new to my YouTube channel, please consider subscribing if you like my teaching style. Been on YouTube for a good 10 plus years. Have hundreds and hundreds of videos that are there for you. So um, obviously I love to teach math. So I do all this stuff for the benefit of you out there, the student. But if you really want my best work, go ahead and just follow um, the link in the description uh, below uh, to my math help program. I think uh, you'll be happy with what you'll see. But with that being said, I definitely wish you all the best in your mathematics adventures. Thank you for your time and have a great day.